Hi everyone, it's MJ and in this video we're looking at some actuarial roles in the financial market. Now actuaries don't have a monopoly on actuarial roles and we'll see that a lot of other investment professionals can perform them. But these are things that are covered in the actuarial syllabus and it is something that you can do if you study actuarial science. And actuarial science is not just all about calculating when people are going to die. Um, the profession is much broader than that. And one of the things that we're very much involved in are these things known as financial markets. Now, let's start off by saying, what, what is the point of a financial market? And the answer is quite simply to allocate capital efficiently. Now, you might ask, why do we want to allocate capital efficiently? And this is not such a silly question because there is an alternative. We could allocate capital evenly. And without getting into too much of a debate between, say, capitalism and communism, I think the reason why we allocate capital efficiently is because societies that have done that tend to win wars against uh, societies that allocate capital evenly, just because it makes economic progression a lot better and they can build bigger weapons and conquer and all that type of stuff. But anyway, let's, let's get back into some of the, the actuarial roles um, in the financial market. And I mean, there, there are a lot, there are tons. Uh, but what I want to do, just so that this video is not like 10 hours long, I'm just going to be looking at, at five of them. And I've got them written down here, just so that I don't forget them. Um, I'm going to tell you what the five are, and then we're going to discuss a little bit more about what each one is. So we can see the first one is there's an actuarial role in corporate finance and public listing. Uh, the second one is actuaries can assist with financial advice and portfolio construction. Uh, we can also help with stock analysis and do our own trading. Uh, we also assist regulation and auditing. And finally, we can also be entrepreneurs and the people who raise capital for various businesses. So let's get into it. Corporate finance and public listing. Um, I mean, this was one of the big ideas of the financial market was that there could be profitable ventures, but they're too big for any individual to do on their own. So financial markets allowed it for crowdfunding to occur. But now, should a project be, be taken on? And yes, on paper, it might look very profitable. If you can buy one thing in India for $1 and sell it in London for $10, then yes, there is potential profit. There could be a business case. But in order to do this, you need to build a ship or buy a ship and sail across the oceans to India. And along the way, there are various risks. There's pirates, there's storms, there's mutiny. There's a whole bunch of things that could go wrong. And actuaries are very good at assessing business risk and saying, is it actually worth it? You know, if there's only a 1% chance that the ship is going to complete this voyage and you're only going to get times 10 on the amount of money, then you might say, mm, maybe I'm going to pass because... With 1%, you'd be expecting at least a minimum of times 100 in order for it to be a fair deal, just bringing in probability and, and simple simple gambling metrics there. So, so actuaries can, can help with public listing and say what the price of each share should be if a company wants to, to list and open their doors for, for the crowd to invest in. But actuaries can also play on the other side. They can go and help investors with constructing their portfolio. So just very quickly, like a very standard piece of advice actuaries might give is they might say, don't put all your money in one ship. You know, don't contribute your life savings to just one project. Instead, rather invest in seven to eight different projects. You know, invest a little bit in ships, invest a little bit in agriculture, invest a little bit in new factories and technology. Um, because what this is going to do is give you a diversification benefit, which is going to reduce your overall risk. And this is one thing that actuaries are very good at incorporating mathematics into the financial realm. So that is number two. I want to go quite quickly just so we can cover all of them. Number three is stock analysts. So this is something that a lot of you can either do as a hobby or you could even turn this into your, your day job where actuaries can actually take various companies and actually compare them and say, this one's better, I'm going to invest in this one or this one's really bad, I'm going to short this one. And it doesn't necessarily just have to be insurance companies because if we look at businesses, businesses are a series of projects and projects are a series of cash flows. And cash flows all have to have a probability weighting of you know, whether they're going to happen or not. And they need to be discounted if they're quite far in the future. 
Now the probability weighting and the discount rate to be used are two things that actuaries are trained in in order to calculate and it get, does give them a bit of an advantage over other investment professionals. I know other investment professionals can also calculate these things. I mean, we do all have access to calculators, um, but actuaries, or I like to think, have got maybe just a little bit of a better understanding of the risks involved in business and so that their assumptions will be a little bit more realistic. But like I say, I'm, I'm a little bit biased because I think actuaries are, are amazing. Um, and anyway, you can either sell this information onto to investment companies or you can use it yourself to trade stocks and, and make a little bit of money that way. Um, going on to, to number four, one thing that we, we have seen, or one thing that people do criticize capitalism for, is that it makes people greedy because a lot of people or market participants have this incentive or have this goal to just make money. So my, my goal might not be to allocate capital efficiently. That's you know the, the goal of the society. My individual goal is to make lots of money. So I might be tempted to scam people, to fool people in thinking that, oh, you know, there's this really good business idea. Uh, people throw money at me and meanwhile, I just take it and I buy a yacht. And I think we saw that a lot with these initial coin offerings in the, the crypto market uh, because there was no regulation. Normal stock markets, they've, they've, they've gone through this before, I think. Yeah, go, go look at the history of the stock market. You'll see that there was bubbles on fictitious companies. Uh, but regulations have been introduced. And a lot of the time, regulators will consult with actuaries to help them understand, especially complex financial instruments um, that your actuaries work with on a day-to-day -day basis. And they can say, okay, is this an actual investment product or is this just a pyramid, a pyramid scheme? And, and the thing is, there have been sophisticated scams that have taken investors' money, um, which is terrible because it, it destroys confidence in the system. So, so actuaries can help in, in catching fraud. And that's why uh, one of the big hires of actuaries nowadays are also the audit firms. Because audit firms who traditionally employ accountants are saying, hey, let's get some actuaries to also help us, especially with life insurers and, and some of these pension funds and other companies that have a very much an actuarial nature. Let's get the actuaries to help us on the auditing. So we can also be a little bit of the referee in these financial markets. Um, and then finally, well, it's not finally, I mean, just finally for this video, like I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments section, all these other roles that actuaries can play in the financial markets. But another big role that actuaries can do is, because we're trained to have a holistic view of the economy, we're quite good at spotting gaps. And that means we can either develop a product that meets a need in the market, or we could be quite bold and set up our very own business. And that's something that we've seen here in South Africa. Um, actuaries have started direct insurers, actuaries have started medical aids uh, that just you know are a little bit better run. And, and what they do is, in this case, the actuary themselves is the entrepreneur going to the market and saying, hey guys, this is my business, um, you know, invest in me and, and hopefully um, I'll make you all rich by you know, allocating this capital very, very efficiently. So those are just five, five things. Like I say, I mean, what we, geez, this video is already hitting eight minutes. So there are a lot more roles that actuaries can do, and there's a lot more deeper roles, more sophisticated roles, uh, roles that take a little bit more time to, to discuss and talk about. But in this video, I just wanted to talk about these five brief uh, views, and that is, you know, actuaries role in corporate finance, in financial advice, in stock analysis, in regulation, and also just in being entrepreneurs themselves. So anyway, we're gonna end the video off there, but let me know if you've got any thoughts, if you've got any video suggestions. What we're doing now is we are making, because we're getting quite a few of these things, we're making like a little poll. So next video, again, there will be another poll. I'll put five video topics. You guys get to choose which one you wanna see, and then that's how we will make it going forward. So yeah. Otherwise, um, also feel free to join in on the Facebook discussion group where we can have a lot more chats about topics coming up and all that. But I do see we're nine minutes and 30 seconds, so let's end this off before it hits 10 minutes. Thanks so much, guys. Keep well. Cheers.